Financial inclusion is a tool for driving inclusive economic growth, reducing inequality, eliminating systemic poverty and improving communal welfare. The evolution of the non-interest finance market and its offerings has provided immense opportunities for deepening financial inclusion in unbanked regions of the globe that are densely populated. Nigeria is one of the densely populated nations and a 2020 survey from EFINA showed that 51% of Nigerian adults are using former financial services, which means there are 49% remaining to be captured. Welcome to another interesting episode of the Islamic Finance Weekly where we discuss key developments in the non-interest market. Today we are going to discuss the role of non-interest finance in closing Nigeria's financial inclusion gap. Our guest on the show is Mr. Abdul Rashid Babalola, Ed Takafu Advisory at Cord Capital Limited. Good to have you on the program to discuss financial inclusion strategies for unlocking demand for Islamic finance. It's good to, it's good to be here too. I, I thank you for the honor. All right, so thank you. So recent report shows that the Central Bank of Nigeria's new target is to achieve 95% financial inclusion by 2024. How can CBN leverage Islamic finance to deepen financial inclusion in Nigeria? Thank you for having me and thank you for the question. The first thing that comes to mind is incentives. Um, the CBN needs to give incentives to um, financial services providers to be able to come into the market or to upskill on what they are already doing. Um, so why am I saying incentives? Several years ago, um, we had a very high importation of rice, but with the anchor borrower scheme, which was an incentive scheme by the CBA, we found out that the, the import receipts of Nigeria has reduced drastically. So if the CBN is supporting Islamic finance institutions with incentives like tax holidays, tax incentives, I believe um, it can it can drive that um, skill that we are, that we want, or we can have more people coming into the Islamic finance space. Another thing that comes to mind um, is that since 2008, Efina has been turning out every two years reports on financial inclusion in Nigeria, most of the findings are very beneficial and can help unlock demand. But unfortunately, that has not been the case. So the CBN can also take it upon herself to organize capacity development sessions for Islamic finance practitioners and people who, who are desirous of going into the space to cascade some of these research findings. Um, I think those research findings need to be cascaded in such a way that it is enabling for the practitioners to use. The third thing that comes to mind is the technical grounds. I know EFINA, um, CBN can walk through the EFINA to get, to, get, to get Islamic finance professionals or organizations, sorry, organizations, technical grants to develop products you know, that will serve the excluded market. Another and final thing that comes to mind is the CBN can also partner with multilateral organizations like the ILO Inclusive Insurance Unit to, for, te for technology and skill transfer. The ILO has been able to carry out a lot of field work researches and come up with theories of change in several parts of the world. We can leverage on that. We can also leverage on organizations like CGAP, um, access to um, um, finance and the likes. I think these four suggestions perhaps can tilt the needle a bit um, in achieving the objective of increasing financial inclusion in Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Hamdur Rashid. You see, financial literacy is the key driver to financial inclusion. I like the fact that you highlighted the role CBN needs to play in order to increase financial services in the country. Now, the Nigeria's National Financial Inclusion Strategy, NFIS, was designed to reduce adult financial exclusion rate from 
46.3% in 2012 to 20% in December 2020. So the target has not been achieved. But from your perspective, how can non-interest finance be deployed to close the financial inclusion gap from 2021 and beyond? So, thank you for that question again. First of all, is awareness, awareness, awareness. <laughs> when, we, when we know better, we do better. Um, we've had up to three Sukuk rounds in Nigeria. I can, I can bet you that um, people in the rural areas are not aware of this. Um, opportunities. So awareness as to how does the product work, how to use it is important. And particularly important again, more importantly, we need to carry out researches to find out what are the needs of the people, what are their, what are their wants, what are their preferences, what are their aspirations, what are the obstacles preventing them you know, from using um, financial, I mean, Islamic finance products. So those are research. Research will help also unlock so many things as to the things that he, he beating people from taking up um, financial services products. But please, it's important to also mention that the excluded market already have coping mechanisms in which they take care of their financial needs. So if Islamic finance is going to go into the excluded market, they have to provide services that are more efficient with their current coping mechanisms. So take for instance, when somebody has an urgent need for cash, the money doubler or the babalajo, as you say, it, is available, is accessible, it is simple to approach him. It is appropriate. It is responsive. And, it's, and it is affordable to them. So if Islamic finance is going to go to, is going to approach such markets, they must offer services that are better than what the babalajo or the chief collector offers. So that is an example. The next thing, that comes to mind is distribution because it is true distribution that the customer comes in contact with the product or service. If you live in Moe today and you want a Takafu product, perhaps you have to drive to Ikeja. That is a huge transaction cost to the clients. Yes, you may find banks. If you drive from Moe to Ikeja, you may not find the Stalin Bank on the expressway. Because Stalin Bank, I do not, I'm not sure Lotus Bank has already started, have opened other branches apart from their Adeto Kumba Ademola branch. So, Just open one yes, distribution makes access easier. So we need to leverage on distribution. And mind you, the target market will not trust you immediately because you are new. So perhaps we are better off leveraging on existing trust, existing and trusted distribution channel. So if take for instance, a bank is a trusted distribution channel. A cement depot is a trusted distribution channel. The, IKEDC or the discos is a trusted distribution channel. The group, the affinity groups, the association, the township associations are distribution channels. So if we leverage on that, we will we'll be able to close the gap. Thank you. I agree with you, Mr. Babalola. The fact that you said non interest financial institutions in Nigeria really need to make research and go to the market so we really know what humans want. Product design, as you have said, is critical too for people, for the client to understand the type of products they want to invest in and this will offer free ways and access to demand. Thank you very much for those insights. Now, what non-instrument, non-interest instruments and products can be integrated into the national financial inclusion strategy? Yeah, um, rather than um mentioned products, which I will eventually do. 
I think the first thing that needs to be done is to carry out research to understand the clients better. What are they used to? People buy what they are used to and what they are comfortable with. But, you know, from the top of my head, um, Mudaraba products, Mudaraba is a partnership arrangement. Somebody provides capital and somebody provides the skill. And at the beginning of the contract, they have a pre-agreed sharing formula. So if the thing, if things go well, the contract, I mean, the, fine, the capital provider and the other party will share the profits according to the pre-agreed um, arrangement. If things go bad, if there are losses, the, fine, the, the provider of capital loses everything. Another thing that comes to mind is Musharaka. Musharaka is what we call joint venture. So joint venture partnerships, people contribute money in equal proportion or in proportionate proportion. I mean, in proportions that are agreeable to all parties. And when profits are made, it is shared along those proportions. Then you also have Muraba, which is like um, a rent to own. You know, um, I know several years ago, people bought Okadas and gave it to the riders and you know, asked them to pay over a period of time to own the Okada. So based on the amount of money that they deliver monthly, before they take, they take ownership of those Okadas or the bicycles, they must have paid the cost of, the, of purchasing the cycle, motorcycle, and some profits for the capital provider. So that um, Murahabara comes to mind. Then family Takafu and um, General Takafu. Yes, because I, the COVID-19 lockdown has you know, tested our resilience. Having an insurance product would help improve people's resilience. So if there's a claim, the insurance company pays and they can get back on their feet. Because lack of insurance or having Takafu product, you know, prevents intergenerational wealth from going from a, from a generation to the other. So if a man owns a house, if the house is not insured and there's a fire, that makes it possible for him to be able to transfer the house to his child. So insurance should and help preserve that and can also enable that. Thank you. All right. I will still say that Islamic finance institution needs to focus on product design. Yes, yes, indeed. So according to the according to the 2021 Global Islamic FinTech Survey report, the African region has been projected to experience a 1% growth in Islamic fintech through the next 12 months. How can Nigeria achieve scale in Islamic digital banking? Thank you for that question again. Usually, technology is an enabler of growth, but technology does not solve all the questions. So let's use, take for example, um, internet banking and the likes. You find out that in northern Nigeria, internet banking did not has not really scaled as we really wanted. I mean, the bankers really wanted to scale. But USSD has really scaled because it has been able to remove those factors that inhibit its usage. One, you don't need data to use USSD. So if you are going to use fintech, fintech must be served in a way that is going to, um, in a way that is affordable, is simple, is um, appropriate to the excluded markets, and even the markets that are already included. I will tell you that technology does not only really transform lives, but it enables an equal opportunity for all. I think Islamic, Islamic banks and need to leverage on technology to close the gap in financial inclusion in Nigeria. Yes, because it was technology, would enable Islamic finance institutions, you know, rich skill. Take, take for instance, yes. when you, if you if you if you are selling, if you are doing mobile banking, mm -hmm. you give. There are 81% of Nigerians have 
mobile devices. So you can reach, you can reach more people. But the point is this, it must be set, it must be deployed in a way that the market is ready to take on. So the market realities, the understanding must be, and context must be taken into consideration in deployments. Because you do not want to deploy technology that is already ahead of the market. So what, what actionable steps can the non-interest finance institutions take? take to support poverty alleviation in Nigeria? Okay, so the first thing I'll say to you again is research. When we, I think um, we focused more on the quantitative research. The quantitative research points to the fact that there's potential. But beyond potential, what next? How do we convert this potential into money? So we need to carry out qualitative research where and focus group discussion, ethnographic studies, and you know, to understand what are the real pain points, the priority needs of the of the people. So from that feedback that we get, it will inform our product design. So if you are going into a community where most of them are semi-illiterate, it is inappropriate for you to create products that it is more appropriate for you to create products that are communicated in very simple languages. You know, when you go to, when you, as a customer care person, I mean, when you phone the customer care numbers of the telcos, they give you the option of speaking in Yoruba. So local dialect can also help, um, you know, um, communicate the value. Because when people know, when to people communicate are communicate with them with the language you understand. Yes, when people know and when people know the value of what they are taking up, they will be more um, appreciative of the product that you want to sell to them. So design thinking, having taken into consideration the convenience of the of the customer, transaction costs. So how do we make it cheaper? Then capacity building of Sharia boards. You know, um, in Islamic finance, is the Sharia boards that approve the product designs. So the product design teams, the marketing teams need to engage more with the Sharia supervisory board so that they can also understand the context of what you are trying to do so, so that they can provide more support. So you're talking about financial, you're talking about financial literacy campaign literacy campaigns and also capacity development of the Sharia capacity supervisory building. board. Yes, because you need to build the capacity of the Sharia supervisory boards for them to be able to approve the products that you want to develop to alleviate poverty. Then leveraging on trusted distribution channel. So I, I mentioned the fact, I mentioned transaction cost. So if I live in Moe, and I want to take up a Takafu product. And the next, the nearest place I can get a Takafu product or an Islamic finance product is Ikeja. I'm going to have to spend close to 2000. So if I want to take a, for example, a Moto Takafu product which costs 5,000, I am spending 2000 to go and get it. That is, a, that is very high, a transaction cost to incur to be able to get that product. So if the Takafu company or the Islamic finance company has kiosks or they have agents in those communities, it will make it easier. When people access this, they'll be able to live rewarding lives and they'll be able to um, increase, um, they'll be able to get out of poverty. Customer value is also something we need to think about. Yes. For, the excluded, for the excluded market, they must see value in what they are buying. Really so, yes, they must see. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdul Rashid Babalola. And that was um, the Eta Kafu Advisory called Capital Limited. Thank you very much, Mr. Babalola, for this robust conversation. Have a great day. As Nigeria seeks to achieve 95% adult financial inclusion by 2024, Broader sensitization on the various non-interest finance products and services to reach the target market will be vital for the nation. 
Non-interest finance operators need to take on the challenge of expanding their outreach to the excluded population via suitable products and services. There is also need to explore collaboration with diverse stakeholders from religious bodies to consumer groups, encouraging the consumers to explore the undertapped potential in the NIF market. This will go a long way in closing the financial inclusion gap and achieve economic empowerment for Nigerians. And that will be all for this edition of the Islamic Finance Weekly. Log on to www.proshareng.com for more information on Islamic finance. Follow us on our social media platform displaying on the screen. Kindly comment below and let's hear your thoughts and also for your inquiry. Many thanks for watching. See you again next week.